Hello and welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. I know I'm not dressed like I live in a ranch, but uh, I'm off duty right now anyway. And the altar dominant man is out and he's taking care of everything with the horses and so on. But anyway, I'm glad you joined me because I have something special for you this evening. And you know, I had the privilege of meeting Dave Brubeck many years ago. I went to one of his concerts and my friend knew his bass player and we got to go in the dressing room and so on, you know, and I, I, I love that group. I've been a faithful follower of all these years and also Paul Desmond was the coolest cat. I mean, he said, he made this comment once that he thought his sound, someone had told him his sound was like a dry martini with two olives. <laughs> I'm a martini fan myself, so I love that. Please write to me if you are. Anyway, I'm going to be showing you something about, uh, Frank asked me to do this from uh, Germany. He said, can you do something to explain the Barry Harris concept of the diminished sixth scale and how to utilize it? So I'm going to do that for you this evening. So uh, here we go with Barry Harris, my interpretation now, Barry Harris's diminished sixth scale. Getting right into it now, my interpretation of the Barry Harris video on diminished sixth scale first thing he talks about is a major six chord and then he says there's two diminished chords inside of this now what that means is when you think about a diminished chord it has minor thirds stacked so there's always going to be a major six in there because see up a minor third up a minor third up a minor third if you can see those intervals well a minor third is a whole step and a half step or three half steps uh, one two three one two three see so you have a major six in there so if you're playing a six chord to see any six chord i mean this is c of course there's that particular diminished chord in there, the C diminished, and then you have this E and the G, well that's another diminished chord because it's a minor, you know, so it'll be the, you could say it's an E diminished. I like to break it down to the C, F, and G just because those are the easiest keys, so this one would be the G because it's the G is in there, right? So then he said there's one diminished chord that's missing in this, and it's the, the F, because we just saw we have the C and the G, so the F is there, right and there it is there's the F diminished so now if you put that in there if you invert it let's take the D and put it down here and then we'll put the F there and then we put the A flat in there and then the B now you have a scale that is built see I'm not getting all of it I'm, there it is there it is built on the major scale but with an additional note and it's that A flat so you have this scale like a C major scale now but with an A flat in it. So you have eight notes in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is a very interesting scale because I'm going to show you how, how this scale works. Okay, so now I'm doing everything in segments. So you get a little break and you can watch a segment over again. And I get a break and I can sort of collect my thoughts and I swear in between of them because I, I certainly blow a lot of these so I have to complain and so on. But anyway, if you take that scale, diminished sixth scale, as Barry is saying, in other words, it's a major scale with a minor sixth in it. Or you can say it's a flat 13, however you want to interpret it. But it has that extra note in there. Now, what does that do for us? Well, first of all, it's going to create a relationship between the major sixth chord and diminished approaches. So I'm going to explain that in detail as we go along here. But the first thing you should have someone do, or you should do, is practice the scale like this. Well, I didn't do that so well, did I? Or you can do it slowly. You want to just really get familiar with the scale, and then you can play it in the left hand, ascending or descending. Um, now, and the, he, had the, he had his students play it this way. Which is, what are you going to do with that? Uh, that's not an important thing. The important thing now is to say, let's try it playing it in thirds. Because what we have to do is we have to move, we have to play only scale tones now. We can't have any other notes that aren't in the scale like these. We have to play, and we have to make sure we get all the scale tones. So let's play it like this. 
and we get to there, now we have to go to there, right? And then there, we get to there, we have to go to there. So see, what we have is a major, a minor, a major, minor, a minor, a major, a major, a minor, plus minor third, major third, minor third, minor third, minor third, what's that, major third, minor third, minor third, minor third, major third, major third, minor third, major third, okay, doesn't mean anything, let's try triads, major triad, diminished triad, now we could do, uh, let's see, we could go here, minor triad, minor triad, diminished triad, major triad, major triad, diminished triad, minor triad, diminished triad. That doesn't mean anything either, so like, now let's try it on the sixth chord. Major six, diminished seventh, major six inverted, right, just this chord inverted, diminished chord inverted, Major six inverted, right? Now we have to go here. Diminished chord inverted. Something is happening here that is symmetrical. Major six inverted, right? And then we go here. Diminished chord inverted. That's, that's, that's what makes this whole scale fantastic and amazing, is how it really has there's meaning to it that's underneath the surface. So, the way I'm breaking it down, the way I'm understanding it is we have a major chord, then we have a diminished chord, then we have a major chord inverted, and then we have a diminished chord inverted. So what we, are ha what we have here is like a one chord in the key, and then a five chord. Why is that a five chord? Because it's really a five. Any diminished chord is really a five acting in another way, or having a disguise, it's uh, incognito, whatever. In other words, it's really, that's really a G7 flat 9. Or it's a D diminished or an F diminished. Or there's so much ambiguity here, it's abstract. Like this is, you know, that could be an A minor 7. And that's an interesting thing because this also works with the relative minor. But anyway, you have the major 6 there, then we have, it's 5. Then we have it inverted, then we have another version of its five, but inverted. Then we have another version of the one chord again, and then we have another version of it invert of the five chord inverted. So in other words, this is showing you a deeper sense of how the one chord and the five chord are tonic and dominant relate to each other through a scale, which he calls the diminished six scale. And but it's it, it's important because it it, it's really like dominant tonic going all over the place, all over the keyboard. And you can use this in such a variety of ways in playing songs, and it's very sophisticated, but at the same time, it's simple if you understand it, but it's also complex. So it has the dichotomy of it being simple and complex at the same time. So let's look at it a little further. Okay, so you missed the swearing on that interlude. The cat heard it, Herbie heard it, but anyway, now I'm, what I'm trying to explain is that a relative major and there's a relative minor. So C major six relates to A minor seven. So the, you know, it's always the sixth step of the scale is the relative minor. So now this particular formula going up that scale in chords is the same for either C major or A minor, but the chords are different. In other words, in C, this is a G altered chord, you know, G7 flat 9, C6 inverted, G7 flat 9 inverted, whatever. And when you relate it to the relative minor, now it has to be the five, you know, this was the one and the five, right? The one and its dominant. So now in A minor, it has to relate to its dominant, which is E7. So there's your family because G7 and E7 are in the same family. It's always based on a diminished chord. So these are the, fam the dominant families, the dominant seventh families. G7, B flat 7, D flat 7, E7. So G7 and E7 are linked. They're the same exact notes but in different uh, order, shall we say. So that is a G7 f 
flat nine, right? But it's also an E7 flat nine, right? And, uh, now, if you look at this on the score, you'll understand it, but G7, one, three, five, flat seven, flat nine. Well, now, if I put the E on the bottom, it's one, three, five, there, that's the seven, there's the flat nine, there's the third, there's there's the amazing symmetry in the families. So you can see now that the relative major and the relative minor relate to this same diminished scale that he's talking about perfectly. Sorry, when I do a retake, it's usually less enthusiastic. So I, maybe I should just keep the first take, you know, omit the swearing and just uh, go with uh, whatever I say. And when I make a mistake, just go on. But anyway. Uh, Nobody's perfect, right? So let's. Uh, so what he did is Barry did was he had the students play it in a variety of ways, and um, he didn't demonstrate it for them. He explained it at the beginning, but then he said just play it. And then they played it, and they played it wrong. So that's a wrong note. That's a wrong note. Well, I'm I'm easy, so I give you the right notes. But you know, you, so you had this, right? You had that. Now what he did was said play it like this. In other words, voiced a different way. In the right hand, this is really a drop two. He doesn't explain it as a drop two, but he just says, put the bass note down here, and then play this voicing, and actually had him play it like that the first time around, but I'm not going to do that to you, because that's too uh, difficult. But anyway, this is better, and what it is is an ascending drop two progression with the same scale. Now that means that I'm taking that second note from the top, and I'm putting it down there, which puts the the bass note of the chord really down there and then it sounds has a really pretty sound like this when, when we do the scale. Now you have to be sure that you're making every note, you know, you can't omit any notes in the scale like that. You have to make sure all the way up that every finger is playing the right note. So that means the next one here is going to have to go there, right? Not here. So you have to get it exactly right. And, you know, once you hear this and you get used to the sound of it, then you'll know when you're playing a wrong note. So here it is. Now that's really pretty sounding, isn't it? Now this is really uh, what classical and the great... Uh, Composers used, even classical composers and, and, you know, Tin Pan Alley and like all your great standards, you know, when you get the, lead, the, the original sheet music, you're going to hear that they're using these chords like that. But, but not in that way, not in a scale, but in, in, in sort of segmented parts of the song. You know, little p interludes or little parts that join to another part. So like you'll hear that. So now, you see, so there it is. Now I'm going to go to the relative okay, minor. Okay, so now. I invented a word, segmented, which, you know, it's a malaprop, but it's a good word, segmented. They're mated together, right? In other words, uh, not mented, but segmented. Now here's the, here's the descending drop to in, in relative minor. Now if you really want to hear the minor, as opposed to the major, then just put the bass note in like this. Right, like that. The, with the bass notes. My, here's the minor. You see, so really all that's going on is you're playing a scale using the relative major going to its five inverted, going to its itself inverted, going to another version of the five just going up in inversions so like you're going up this he doesn't explain it that way but that's what, really what's going on c6 inverted like that and then the diminished chords inverted like this and the amazing thing that they really do fit that scale that's what's amazing about it and if you go to the relative major same thing happens you're going relative major you can start it at any inversion you want it doesn't matter if you're starting here and you go down, then you're going from the relative major to its five chord, to its, you know, now, now you're seeing all the possibilities that there are within songs, and that's just one key. Now you have 12 keys. <laughs> this is an incredible assignment if you were to master this. 
You know, if you're, if you're a scientist kind of person or a geek or whatever you are, and you're studying piano and you want to master this, then this is like one of the greatest assignments you'll have because you'll understand the keyboard thoroughly in every possible way in this, in this manner. Okay, so what Barry had his students do is he took, the, they were in the key of C, right? Just to start. So he had them take this, this part of it, the diminished chord going to another diminished down to the sixth chord, and then another diminished like that, and then going to a chord like that. Now, what that is, is a two, it's a 2-5. In other words, in, it's a 2-5 in, in uh, G, A minor 7, D7. So, so this is, uh, which relates to, uh, you know, the 5 chord, G7 would be the 5 chord of C. So it's, this would be like a 6, and then a... Five of five, so it'd be this. You had them play this. Now, how do you use this concept in that? So, diminished chord, diminished chord, C6 inverted, diminished chord, C6 inverted, then to this. Now, that's an altered D7, but it has what does it have? One, three, flat seven, flat nine sharp 11 right 13 so it's it's very rich sounding so what i did was this once i heard that and then he, you know you want to play this in all the keys of course to me it sounded like part of the song as time goes by so then i applied this little lick to that song and how here's how it would sound the end of uh, the eight bar section of the song you know like if you played the song it'd be here it comes you see so it's very sophisticated and then you could transpose it to another key like this this would be putting into the key of E flat. That's the original key of the song. All right, so there you see the, the practical application. So we'll take it one step further. I always say, what good are scales or concepts or chords or anything unless we can apply them to a specific song? So here on be My Love, it's a uh, posting I did on an arrangement by Barry Harris. He uses this uh, concept perfectly. Right here, he does it here. I'm gonna show you now, right here. There it is, there is the diminished chord approach in drop two to the sixth chord, the relative minor in A flat. And then he does it again. There's the relative minor in the key of B flat. So in other words, uh, we're in the key of E flat, but he's using those particular type of voicings and he's using that scale at that point. Now you might not want to look at this score to study this and understand it because it'll take a little bit more than that. But that's an example of it and what it sounds like. So my suggestion to you is, I hope I've cleared some of this up. If you've watched the Barry Harris video of him teaching in Germany. Anyway, practice the scale in C. With that extra note in there, okay? And then practice the chords so you know what they are. Then practice them in the key of F like this, same thing. Practice them in G. Start with those three keys, the easiest keys, and then go from there if you're really interested in this. And see how they apply to songs that you're playing and if you can utilize them. And it's a fascinating thing. So uh, we'll wrap up now. Okay, so that's wrapping up now for the diminished sixth scale. And that's just a tidbit, as we'll say. And I hope to see you next time around. And I'm going to be doing something more on left-hand techniques. So stay with me. Please write to me. 
I love to hear from you and give me some time to write back to you because I try to write back to every comment I get. So give me some time. And until next time, I will say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, swing loose and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye. <laughs>